In this learning objective, we are going to compare between intramolecular and intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces of attraction are the forces that occur within a molecule. So if we take Cl2 as a molecule, we can clearly see that the bond that attracts Cl to Cl within that molecule, it holds these atoms together, is actually the intramolecular force. And it's always represented by a solid line. While in intermolecular forces of attraction, we always see a dotted line or a dashed line. Okay, so intermolecular forces of attraction are always represented by a dashed line or a dotted line. And they are those that occur between the molecules. So they are not within the molecules, they are between the molecules. They are actually the forces that will keep all the molecules of the same substance in one place. To start with intramolecular forces, we already know the three types of them. We have ionic bonds, which occur between a metal and a non-metal, and they actually involve transfer of electrons. The metal will always lose its electrons or electron. If it has only one valence, it's going to lose one valence electron. If it has more, it loses more than one. And then the non-metal is going to gain these or that lost electron to form ions. As you can see, we have the positive ion and the negative ion. The positive ion is known as the cation and the negative ion is known as the anion. So, ionic bond structure consists of giant lattice of cations and anions held together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction. It occurs between metal and non-metal atoms. Electrons are transferred between atoms. Ionic bonds have different properties. They are all solid at room temperature. And as you can see, this is the rigid structure of lattice of cations and ions that are held together. Okay, they are all solid at room temperature, so that's why they have high melting and boiling points because of the strong forces of attraction between their cations and anions. They do not conduct electricity when they are solids. They just conduct electricity when they are in the molten state, and molten means in the liquid state, or aqueous, it means when they are dissolved in water. And now let's start with metallic bonding. Metallic bonding, structure consisting of giant metallic lattice of regularly arranged cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. So you can see the minus everywhere, which represents the electrons. So we have a sea of delocalized electrons. The number of delocalized electrons and size of cations determine the strength of metallic bond. But in general, the metallic bonding is always weaker than the ionic bonding, but stronger than the covalent bonding. Bigger cations and more electrons causes metallic bond to be stronger. Now, regarding its properties, solid at room temperature, most of metals, or actually 99% of metals are solids at room temperature, except for mercury, which is a liquid. They have high melting point and boiling point, good conductors of electricity in all states, malleable and ductile. Malleable means we can hammer them into thin sheets like aluminum foil, for example. Ductile, we can uh, pull them into thin wires like copper wires. Now let's start with the last type, which is covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is uh, the type of intramolecular forces that involve sharing of electrons between two non-metal atoms. And these non-metal atoms can be the same, identical atoms, or different. Their properties, in general, they're soft solids, liquids, or gases. They are insoluble in water, and they do not conduct electricity at all states. So they do not conduct electricity, they're bad conductors. They have low melting and boiling points as well. And this is due to the fact that their, uh, their forces of attraction are the weakest amongst all the intramolecular forces. So just to wrap it up, we have three types of intramolecular forces. We have ionic bonds, metallic bonds, and covalent bonds. In this learning objective, we have to compare and contrast the intermolecular forces. 
with respect to type of molecules involved and strength. We actually have also three types of intermolecular forces, which are the forces that exist between uh, the atoms of the same molecule, or we can say within the molecule, within the molecule. So to start with the London dispersion forces, they are intermolecular forces of attraction, and they result from the constant motion of electrons and the creation of instantaneous dipoles. They are relatively weak forces of attraction that exist between nonpolar molecules and noble gas atoms. So in all different atoms, we always have electrons. That's why London dispersion forces, they exist in the different types of molecules, whether they were nonpolar or polar molecules. Now, in general, larger nonpolar molecules tend to have stronger London dispersion forces. For example, for the nonpolar molecules, the further you go down the group, the stronger the London dispersion forces will be. And this is an example from group 17 elements, which are halogens. So going down the group of halogens from fluorine and uh, to chlorine, then to bromine and iodine, we're going to get stronger London dispersion forces. And that's why fluorine is a gas, also chlorine is a gas, but bromine becomes a liquid and then iodine is a solid because the particles are getting closer from each other as you move down this group uh, since the London dispersion forces are getting stronger. So in other words, the London dispersion forces are actually determining how close or how far the particles of fluorine molecules will be and chlorine molecules will be, etc. So if you have strong attractions, these molecules will be closer from each other and they will be more likely uh, solids or liquids. But if you have weaker attractions, weaker London dispersion forces, okay, then they are going mostly to be gases. And now for the second type, it's known as the dipole-dipole forces. And this type is actually the force between oppositely charged ends of two mo polar molecules. So if I look at this molecule, this is a polar molecule because it has a big difference of electronegativity between hydrogen and chlorine, which creates a partial positive charge on hydrogen and a partial negative charge on chlorine. So that's why these two atoms and they are going to form a polar bond. And since they are uh, forming a polar bond, then the Cl from the first molecule is going to attract the hydrogen from the second molecule and form dipole-dipole force of attraction, which is a type of intermolecular forces. So if you ask me what's the difference between London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole forces, London dispersion forces, they occur in all types of molecules, whether they were polar or nonpolar, like in the Cl2 molecule. But dipole-dipole forces, they only occur between two molecules that are polar, okay? So the partial negative end of the first molecule will be attracted to the partial positive end of the second molecule. And now we still have to discuss the last type of intermolecular forces, which is the hydrogen bond. And actually, the hydrogen bond is a type of dipole-dipole forces, but it has a special case, okay, because it occurs between hydrogen atom in one molecule, so this is one molecule, and that's the hydrogen atom of the, of the first molecule, and it's actually going to be attracted to another uh, atom that must be either oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen. So here we have, this is a hydrogen bond happening between these two molecules. So this is the first and this is the second. In the first molecule, we have hydrogen. In the second molecule, we have oxygen. So they get attracted to each other. And we can see that attraction that is known as the hydrogen bond, okay, with a dashed line or a dotted line. We've got here another example of a hydrogen bond. It's happening between hydrogen and nitrogen, hydrogen from one molecule and nitrogen from another molecule. And the third type of hydrogen bonds is between hydrogen and fluorine. Of course, hydrogen will be from one molecule and fluorine from another molecule. Now, it's really important to know that the hydrogen bond is the strongest Amongst all intermolecular forces, then comes dipole-dipole forces, and the weakest of intermolecular forces are the dispersion forces. 
and there's really an important remark that I want to give you here, guys, is that intramolecular forces that exist within a molecule are always stronger than any type of intermolecular forces that exist between molecules. Now, let's start with 8.2.4. It says, explain why hydrogen bonds are stronger than most dipole-dipole forces. This is because hydrogen bonds involves a large difference in electronegativity between the hydrogen atom and the atom it's attached to, like fluorine, nitrogen, or oxygen, making the bond extremely polar. So when I say extremely polar, this means we're going to see delta plus on hydrogen and delta minus either on nitrogen, fluorine, or oxygen. In this learning objective, we have to compare between a temporary dipole and a permanent dipole. A temporary dipole forms when one molecule is close to another molecule, and the electrons repel each other, creating a greater electron density in one part of the molecule. And this is actually caused by the constant movement of electrons in a molecule, whether it was polar or nonpolar. But for permanent dipoles, like for example, when we're talking about hydrogen bonding or dipole-dipole forces, we can clearly see that uh, we find this in polar molecules in which some regions of the molecule are always partially positive or partially negative. Okay, so for example, if we look at here between H and N, H is always partially positive while N is always partially negative. So this will create a permanent dipole because it relies on something that is fixed. While in a temporary dipole, the molecule gets closer to another molecule just because of the constant movement of electrons, which is constantly changing. So it's not always the same. The electrons might be on, let's say this is the molecule, so the electrons might be on this side, for example, to the right at t equal one second, and then at t equal two seconds, they might just migrate to the left side of the same molecule. So this will create a temporary dipole because electrons are moving back and forth within this uh, molecule, changing the polarity of this molecule. In this learning objective, we have to explain why dispersion forces are weaker than dipole-dipole forces. Now, as you can see over here, this is H2 molecule, and it's a nonpolar molecule because there's no difference in electronegativity between the two Hs. So this means that the two hydrogen molecules, in order for them to be attracted to each other, they only rely on the movement of electrons, the constant movement of electrons within each molecule. So let's say if in the first molecule, the electrons decide to reside on that side of the molecule, which is to the left. Okay, then in this case, this part of the molecule is going to become partially positive, and this is going to induce the second molecule to become also polarized or having two partial uh, ends, partially charged ends. So here we're going to get the negative and and here the positive end of course partially negative partially positive but this is not a permanent dipole because h2 is not a polar molecule but if you look at so this is a temporary dipole this is how a temporary dipole can form now if you look at the second side we can clearly see that this is a permanent dipole a permanent dipole because it's made up of a polar molecule so you have here a polar molecule because there's a big difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and cl unlike this molecule that had only two hydrogen atoms so this will create a dipole on each side a dipole molecule on each side we have two polar molecules and then the attraction between them it's going to be dipole dipole it means between two polar molecules. And this kind is actually a permanent dipole because we always see the delta minus on the Cl and the delta plus on the hydrogen. And now for the last objective, it says explain in terms of intermolecular forces why different substances exist as solid, liquid, or gas at the same conditions of temperature and pressure. For example, if you look at oxygen, it's a gas at room temperature, while water is a liquid at the same condition. Now, actually, oxygen contains London dispersion forces between its molecules, while water contains London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds between its molecules. 
And as we know, the dipole-dipole forces and the hydrogen bonds are stronger than dispersion forces, which makes water particles closer from each other, and that's why it finishes with a liquid state. While oxygen molecules, they cannot be very close from each other, and that's why they remain at room temperature in the gaseous state.